I'd like to thank you all for coming here today. Um, I'm Grace Krennican, General Manager at BART, and I'd like to thank all of you for coming here today. It's great to have us all here. Uh, we're here today to give the Bay Area some good news and give our riders some good news. I am joined with the presidents of ATU, SEIU, and AFSCME to announce that we have reached a tentative agreement on a contract that, if approved, will carry us for five more years into the future until June of 2021. There are three features to this tentative agreement. Uh, the first one has to do with pay, and in 2017, there will be a 2.5% raise, another 2.5% raise in 2018, in 2019, a 2.75% raise, and in 2020, another 2.75% raise. The second feature is that we have agreed not to address the PEPRA issues at this time. We have a lawsuit pending between the U.S. Department of Labor and the state of California, and we'd like to get a little bit more information before we move forward on that. And the third feature <clears throat> is that the rest of the contract will remain mostly the same. Both sides acknowledge that we need to focus on rebuilding this system. Both sides agree that we need to focus on service to our riders. We need to keep the Bay Area moving, and we know it, and it's going to take a lot of work to do it. Before I introduce the union leaders and our president, Tom Radulovich, I want to do two things. One is to acknowledge Carol Eisen, our fairly new labor officer, chief labor officer. Carol, wave your hand. Just It was Carol's ability to talk labor and translate between us, between them, uh, and that made this deal possible. She's been asking me to do this since September, and she's been absolutely terrific at working with all of us and getting our issues on the table and keeping it a very uh, good and positive uh, discussion. The unions and I were willing to do this, and Carol was able to do the translation, and we really appreciate it. So, Carol, thank you very much. The second thing I want to do is to thank our BART workers. Um, it has been their tireless commitment to keeping this system together that has made it happen. BART is the oldest, has the oldest fleet in the country, yet it has one of the highest utilization rates. That means the trains are out there highest percentage of the time, and that's because of these workers. We have a highly skilled workforce that are motivated and dedicated to keeping this system together. The system rebuilding we are doing now has only been done because everyone here has worked together. The track crews working 12 hours are just the beginning of it. Uh, that we've had train controllers, train operators have had to change schedules and routes, station agents. They need to guide the passengers to where they need to get for these bus bridges, all while doing their regular job. Uh, the car repair teams have been working on overdrive. Station cleaners have had volume riders. We've hit uh, most of our top 10 numbers in BART's history have occurred in 2015. Um, this increase in ridership is hard to clean up after, so don't take uh, for granted the work of the station uh, serv system service workers. The schedulers, the managers, the office workers, they've had to get out on the weekends and provide this added on the surface uh, communication with our riders. Um, also, our team of workers have met the challenge of supporting things like the Super Bowl, uh, the Warriors Championship, the Pride Parades. <clears throat> These are really knockout events that we've had, and this team has done a knockout job of doing it. So we want to give the workers a big round of applause and thank them for all that they've done. <laughs> we are very eager to keep that going to keep the Bay Area going and to keep the rebuilding of the system going. And this agreement will allow us to do that, to focus on the rebuilding and to focus on the system. So we're excited for it and for the cooperation that we've uh, had during this time. Now I would like to introduce the union leaders. They have provided excellent leadership. They've articulated the needs of the writers. They've articulated the needs of the system and of their workers very well. They've done an excellent job. We've had a very constructive conversation, and I just am very proud of the leadership that, that they've shown and the uh, communication that's gone on between all of us. So I want to thank them personally. Uh, we have four people to speak. The first is Chris Finn, who's the president of ATU. Next will be John Arantes. SEIU 10 to 1, then Olivia Rocha, SEIU Professional Chapter, 
And then Sal Cruz of ASME, and then I'll have our president speak. So I'd like to introduce Chris Finn at this time of ATU. Chris? Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Good morning, Chris Finn, ATU 1555. And we've been laying the foundation for this agreement for probably about two years now. After the 2013 negotiations, I want to congratulate the board of directors for hiring a consultant to look into what went wrong in 2013 negotiations. Uh, they, the board of directors approved that report. The president at the time, Joel Keller, he set up a committee to follow through on the recommendations of that report. Current president Radulovich has continued that committee. I'd like to commend the, the committee members, especially director Rebecca Saltzman, director Gail Murray for participating in those monthly meetings between management, between the unions to hear our issues. Uh, from that, those committee meetings, we were able to set up a two-day uh, workshop where we tackled the four toughest topics out of that report, the four toughest topics of the 2013 negotiations. Those were reestablishing the trust and respect here at BART between labor and management, communication strategy that did not involve us beating each other up in the media, uh, providing us the information that we need to bargain in good faith, and avoiding the breakdowns in communications and negotiations, so to prevent a repeat of 2013. That workshop took months of planning, months of discussion and dialogue, and it was very successful and again, was a big step forward in getting us to where we are today. So we've, we've come a long way, but we still have a ways to go. And so we're reaching the point where we would need to make some decisions, uh, and the unions have proposed this a couple of times. We should extend the contract. Uh, we should roll over the terms and conditions. And so now is about the time where we would need to decide, are we gonna dedicate our resources to focusing on preparing for full-blown negotiations in 2017, or do we focus our resources on keeping BART moving? And so I commend the general manager, Grace Krunikin and Carol Eisen for approaching us when they did and allowing us to get to this deal. I believe, we believe this is a, a fair deal for our workers, for management, for the Bay Area, and it also allows us to focus our resources now on keeping the Bay Area moving. Uh, I would like to say that I think the public, or we believe the public, is not really interested in who started the fight. It's when two kids are fighting in the sandbox, you don't, know, you don't care who started the fight. You just wanna make sure those kids can figure it out and stop fighting and improve the relationship. And that's, I believe, what we're doing here. And I'd like to thank the other unions. I'd like to thank management for getting us to this deal. And of course, I'd like to thank all of our members. Thank you very much. John Arantes, President of Bart Chapter. SEIU 1021. This agreement is for our patrons and all of the Bay Area. This TA will provide the region and BART workers with a consistent and uninterrupted service for the next five years. This agreement will ensure BART workers and management to focus our collective energy in facing the ongoing challenges that we face every day and rebuild BART for the future. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Olivia Rocha, and I am the president of the SEIU Professional Chapter, Local 10 to 1. This agreement clearly shows that the unions and BART management are making efforts to forging a better relationship. It also shows the respect we are forging between us and acknowledges the daily hard work of BART workers to keep our riders moving as the system ages and the ridership records are regularly broken. I am very proud to be part of this effort, which I hope will help ease the minds of those who depend on BART. Thank you very much. Good morning, Sal Cruz, president of AFSCME Local 3993. Uh, this is a pivotal moment in BART history and Bay Area labor relations. The amount of collaboration that it took to uh, make this happen was tremendous. Uh, this could very well, well be the turning point for BART and the new benchmark for labor relations moving forward. I thank all the parties involved. Thank you. Uh, Tom Radulovich, I'm uh, president of the board. Um, some of you remember my face from 2013. Um, I was hoping most of you had forgotten it. But um, <laughs> anyhow, I'm, I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, as was said, uh, the agreement that we came to in 2013 was not a terrible agreement, but it was a terrible process of getting there. We really let the Bay Area down uh, in a lot of ways. The Bay Area needs BART more and more and more. 
Um, I ran for this board because I, I think BART has a tremendous role to play in creating a more just, a more sustainable, a more livable Bay Area. And uh, that's proven every day. We are breaking ridership records. The, the Bay Area has become more and more dependent on BART. Um, we're growing to more corners of the region. Uh, and, and BART's going to be a bigger and bigger and more and more important part of our future. And so people need to make sure that it's there. We need to provide a good service. Uh, we need to provide a reliable service with no interruptions. Now, uh, we've had a lot of interruptions to service in the last few years, as, as you've noted. Um, the system is aging. We're reaching the physical limits of it. And we have a huge task in front of us to renew this system, to expand its capacity to carry people uh, and renew the parts that have uh, worn out. And uh, our workers have been a tremendous part of keeping this system going, keeping it working. Um, the committee was mentioned, and I just wanted to call it Director Saltzman. She's one of our board co-chairs for that. Uh, and all of the, the folks in this room uh, who've been working on that committee to try and make this process of, of labor and management talking uh, to one another a better process. Um, so we've been able to uh, work through things, not only um, have these meetings in this committee and, and talk about how to talk about things, uh, but we've also been able to talk things through, work through things like, you know, how to do a 72-hour uh, interruption of service. Um, all of these uh, incredible efforts that you've seen to bring folks together for um, uh, basketball championships for um, other sports events, I'm not that um, sporty, uh, <laughs> uh, have been terrific. The pride parades, um, you know, these are, you know, we break records all the time. Super Bowl, yeah, that's right. All right, another sports, sports ball. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we're working together a lot better, and uh, I think that report laid the foundations for this, and uh, we don't need to do this right now. We have over a year left on the current contract, so we could do the whole thing that we did uh, in 2015, again in 2017, but uh, the folks in this room came together. They said, you know, hey, it's going to be better for the Bay Area, better for our workers if we do this now, uh, create some certainty. As I mentioned, it wasn't a bad contract. Um, so uh, it's a contract that we can all live within, and uh, I just wanted to salute everyone here, and, uh, you know, Let's do this. Uh, as, the, as was mentioned, this is, uh, we're in the middle of this process. This will need to be ratified by the union membership. This will be, need to be ratified by the board of directors. I have some confidence in this. I'm certainly going to vote for it. I think it's a great uh, agreement. Uh, and then we can move on to the big challenges facing BART uh, and begin to step up in the ways that the Bay Area needs us to step up. So thanks all of you for stepping up. You've done a terrific thing, I think, for, uh, for your workforce, for the Bay Area. Um, they need you. You know that. And, uh, Thanks for being here, doing what you do, and um, that's all I have to say. So I think that's, that's all the speakers, so thanks. We'll be happy to take some questions. What do uh, Bay Area writers get out of this, Grace? What, what, what do the Bay Area writers get out of this? The Bay Area writers get a lot out of this. They get the certainty of no strike, no service interruption, unless it's planned. Uh, between now and uh, 2021. It's five years of labor peace. It's five years of us working together and delivering the service we want. Thank you. Going back to that period of time, it was such a nasty, uh, you, you wondered how you could possibly ever get any of these sides back together again with the same personnel and same people. Was it some sort of joint revelation that the public wasn't gonna stand this anymore? Uh, the success that we've had this past couple of months working on this uh, project. Uh, actually, it's been two years. We've been at this for two years. We had a nice long session in November, as Chris noted, and it's been about everyone pitching in together to realize the future that we need to serve the Bay Area. So we came together. I think we all realized what we want to do is, is up our game and improve what happened last time and look to the future and rebuild the system. That's what it's all about. Is this going to result in any increase in fares? The fares um, are not going to increase as a result of this um, agreement. We have most of the money for this already budgeted in what's being put together. We're getting an extremely large amount of productivity. The workers are as productive as the industry. Uh, they're the most productive in the industry. They get a great, we get a great return on their investment. I think we get a great return on the investment of the writers. It's, uh, it's been a lot of, there's been a lot of cooperation. Our ability, Tom noted this, but we, we closed down the Transbay tube for the first time, and the only way we could do that was a planned shutdown was to renew the track was because of the cooperation that's going on here. So the writers will have an improved amount of service, uh, quality of service, I think, just because of the investments we're making now. We have a bond measures coming up in the future if we get that. That's great. But if we don't, we're going to be getting, I think, a better and better return on the investment of the writers' dollars right now that they're making right now. 
What would you say to uh, riders who have seen a lot of problems lately, and I know the electrical issue and all of that, you're still trying to figure it out, but for those who think this, on one hand, might be good timing, it's a year and a half early, on the other hand, might think it's bad timing because of what's been going on recently, and any raise to them, to workers at this time, might not look so good. Uh, BART has a 43 year old, we are a 43 year old system. We have to make these reinvestments in the infrastructure and we use our workers to make these investments. There's a high, there's a ballet that goes on out there between the train control, between the planning that's done well in advance, months if not years in advance, um, and the work that, that goes on, the dynamics and the interplay. So it takes a large amount of cooperation. That's going to pay off by having us not diverting our time and attention to extended labor talks you know, coming up in the next year. I think the Bay Area will benefit greatly from the work that's done and those ballets I talked about can continue in the future. You mentioned the bond measure. If the bond measure does not pass, is there any impact or change that needs to be made in this agreement here or will they, or do they not intertwine at all? The bond measure is about a capital reinvestment in the system. None of that money can be used to pay the workers. This will all be uh, paid for on the operating side of the budget. So it doesn't affect the employees at all. The bond measure affects our ability to invest in the infrastructure and make it strong to carry the increased ridership we anticipate in the Bay Area. But capital uh, investment and capital spending does dictate the movement of workers who are paid through operating budget. They do have to uh, be allocated different places. It changes the allocation. This won't affect that in any way. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm not getting your question. It, there's no... The, this, it, the ballot measure is about capital reinvestment. This is about the operating budget. So the unions plan to get behind the bond now? Uh, we're not really here to discuss the bond. I, we, I don't speak for the union members, but you guys, it's not appropriate to say anything now. Well, yeah. isn't the bond why we're here? <coughs> no. 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 You, you would have reached this re agreement a year early regardless of the bond when, uh, and the threats from the 22 lawmakers in Contra Costa County? When the... Um, I think Tom started to address this, but when 2013 happened, the question was when 2013 happened, we knew we had a problem. We knew we had to get back to the table and, and get things going again. So we started, there, were not, there was a report that was done that articulated many things that had to happen. One of them was not to negotiate in the public. One of them was that we needed to start talking and taking, um, s sitting down and doing a lot more face-to-face. -face. And that's what we've been doing is negotiating, uh, um, not the contract, but our relationship with each other, getting problems solved, getting rid of grievances. We've been doing a lot of that. Carol's been a big part of that process. And so we were able, because of that relationship, to sit down and address the future we saw coming up. And we needed to take this off the plate so that we could do the work that we need to do. Other questions? I'll take two more. Can you address the issue of bonuses and, and how that works on a system that is in chronic condition right now? Uh, the word bonus sounds like they're going to automatically get it. You have to pass three tests. And uh, this concept of rewarding the workers uh, has to do with the fact that for the ridership, for us to achieve the ridership we want, you have to have riders that want on the system, but we have to be able to deliver a service to them. So uh, the trains have to run. The, op the train operators need to show up for work the control and drive, you know, the controller the system service has to work, everything has to work well. And so by having a bonus tied to ridership and then the, uh, the uh, BART's ability to pay are the other two factors, um, we thought it was only fair if ridership goes up that the workers get to share in some of that bonus because they've carried a much heavier load as a result of the added uh, stress that comes on a system with the high ridership we've had. We've broken every record we've had except one, I think, in 2015, the top 10 days, I believe, are all this year. And so, it, and it's, by the way, the BART has to be able to pay those bonuses. So there's three fiscal issues there. One is the ridership's up and the revenue's coming in. Two has to do with no extraordinary costs on pension, no extraordinary costs on maintenance, on the medical. There's a, a certain increase that's allowed, and then if it's over that, it, it kills the deal. So the ability to pay is also part of this whole thing. And I, I might add that the bonuses weren't issued the first year. They were issued the second year. I don't know if they're going to be issued this year or not. It's not a given. One, One more question. question. <coughs> Two-part two workers died on the tracks during the last uh, the last strike. There were a horrible day for about, us. Oh, sorry, me, uh, folks. Uh, to, there were concerns about safety from the unions during the last <coughs> negotiations. Uh, how have those concerns been addressed? Well, I'll tell you how they've been addressed, and then if someone wants to speak here, please. Um, we, uh, we've worked with the PUC. 
uh, to CPU PUC. Uh, we've worked with the feds. There is a new order that's out. It's called General Order 175. As soon as that order came out, we included an increase in the budget. The board was very dedicated to finding the money to make that change right away. And we added uh, wayside safety rules. Uh, a lot of rules were changed as a result of that. And we staffed up to provide changes in the wayside safety uh, that were there. We've made a few other changes in safety. But we took that accident very seriously. It was a big loss for all of us. Would someone from the union like to say anyone like to say John? Uh, the unions and management continue to meet through committees to address the safety issues. Safety is not something that you just do once and everything gets resolved. It's an ongoing issue. It's an ongoing challenges. And we together, the workers and management, coming together to find the solutions, then you get the right solution for the patrons and for the workers. Okay. Thank you, John. Grace, are you absolutely sure because so much of this lynch is on the new cars coming, and Bombardier does have its issues. Are you guys doing everything you can to make sure that they will deliver these cars as promised, on time, without delays, which seems to be a problem with them, with other systems? We have a very intense relationship with Bombardier. We've been working very hard to do exactly that, to make sure that the cars are coming on a timely fashion and that they're coming in the quality that we want. We have a lot of confidence in that, Tom. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.